Cheers, everyone, and welcome back to Instant Screaming. Let's do up some ghost stories. We got the Abandoned and the Awakening. Now, the setup for the Abandoned is very, very similar to uh, Abandoned Dead, where a young woman takes a night security position and then needs to deal with terrifying activity in the building she's guarding. Now, the two big differences here are that in the Abandoned, our lead is in a massive mansion with lower levels that apparently once doubled as a crappy asylum, and uh, she isn't totally alone here. For a while, there's a vagrant played by ding, 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 Mark Margolis from Breaking Bad seeking shelter from the storm, and uh, she's also got a handy, capable co-worker played by Jason Patrick of Lost Boys. Now, there are some pretty decent makeup effects in this movie, and I really like the whole video surveillance setup. Unfortunately, they just don't do much with it and more or less abandon the fact that they have complete building control and almost complete surveillance pretty early on, which really is a pity because I think they could have gotten a lot of mileage from having one character who can freely move but can't see everything or control the environment relying on another character with restricted movement but a fancy security system. Instead, the movie is almost wholly unremarkable with scares that don't really make a lot of sense. There's no context for the makeup effects as good as they were, and uh, there's a twist ending that is fairly easy predictable, not because it's obvious, but because it's just sort of what a movie like this is expected to do. So that's that, but let's hop across the pond for The Awakening, which is a British period piece about a woman in the 1920s who travels around England debunking supernatural phenomena. Now the case in the movie is uh, a ghost boy sighted at a boarding school in Northern England that winds up being much more real than she thought. I first saw this movie during a random Netflix binge a couple of years ago, and it really surprised me. I actually liked it so much I wound up buying it on Blu-ray. I really liked the, the, the use of their time period and the, the whole countrywide post-World War I grief. The setting was also really great for creating an atmosphere of isolation and, and alienation. Loneliness. There's a decent enough mystery here, but I was much more invested in the character exploration and the atmosphere. The hauntings are very restrained and escalate pretty well, playing more with the psychology of the characters than a lot of ghosts right out front of you. Now, finding negatives is a bit difficult since it has been some time since I've seen this movie, and I mostly remember positive impressions. But I recall the way the mystery was solved and its connection to the main character being ultimately a bit too convenient to be satisfying. Uh, there's a, the whole story has a few odd elements and subplots that I really don't think were entirely necessary and do distract a little bit, but not enough to, to make the beginning feel overstuffed, just a little bit busy. Now, the very, very ending is also deliberately ambiguous. Though the director has given uh, a definitive answer, he wanted the audience to be able to read the ending however they wanted to. You like it. Top form British ghost story with a great atmosphere, style, and characters. Anyway, that's all I've got for you for today's Instant Screaming. Hopefully that helps you out. If you've seen either of these two movies and want to talk about them, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for movies that you'd like to see on this show or on Modern Horror, also leave that in the comments section below. Like and subscribe for more videos. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter for updates. Anyway, cheers folks.